Okay, good evening, everyone. Oh my gosh, I almost did not get here on time because if you saw my setup right now, you would probably be dying laughing with me. I'm plugged in beside my bed in the camper, but I had to have my ring light and this whole setup is just hysterical. I wish you could see my my what I see. I will have to take a picture and show you after this is done and posted in the comments, but we don't have time to talk about that right now because tonight is our um, our next night in the series about skills training in network marketing. And I'm so excited to be here. We took last week off for Labor Day. Hopefully you got a chance to catch up. For those of you who are just hopping on, don't worry. Even though we are like four weeks in, you are not late. You're not running behind. You can go back into the guides of this group. So if you go to OQ Brand Partners group, then you click the guides. You can see the skills training replays and you can get caught up. You could do one a day and be caught up by next week and have all of the skills that we've already learned. And then you can fill out the form and that form is what we're what we what we are going off of for actually mailing out the skills training uh, cert brand partner certifications at the end of the seven skills. So we're only not even we're just crossing over the halfway mark tonight. And um, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here with you. I'm just I'm pumped. Okay, so tonight we're talking about how to present your products or service to prospects, and this is a really good um, w one of my favorite weeks because it illuminates the facts that everybody has weaknesses. And I'll just tell you right now up front, this one out of all of the skills, this is my personal weakest one. And as I'm going through these skills, even now, even seven years in, eight years into the business, I'm always thinking how can, what are the areas for me that I'm struggling in, that I need to level up in, and I'm, and this is the clear one for me. And so it's always exciting when I find that because it's an opportunity. And so here's what I want you to know. Number one, I'm teaching this not from a place of perfection. These skills training, not from a place of perfection, but from a place of these are the skills that we know. These are the pillars that we know we need. And we can be kind of like detectives around what do we need to level up in. And, and I don't know, I just get all excited about that. So also, with that being said, even though I, I believe this is my weakest one, you can also just look at it from the perspective of like, if I can get to diamond with this being my weakest one, well, that's exciting for everybody, right? So you can have like huge, weak, um, gaping holes. And I don't want to say that I, I'm bad at this, but I will tell you, this is the one that I continually find myself having to work on because I have a few mindset issues that get in the way here. And so I'm excited to dive into that with you. Awareness is the first step. So, this skill is for when you have a prospect in front of you who is at that point of they are ready to learn. They are kind of like teach me everything energy. So I want like they're at a place where they have expressed that they're ready to learn. And so you don't have to worry about like, is it weird to say, can I share my oil story? Because they're already there. They're already asking like, hey, you know, tell me more. So if, if you haven't, don't feel comfortable with getting a prospect to that point, go back in the skills trainings and look at and learn the, the um, skills that we've already talked about. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So presenting your products. Number one, people will decide how they feel about you or what they think about you upon just seeing you. We, there are studies that show that first impression is so important. And a lot of people make a determination about how they feel about someone within like the first seven seconds of them finding them. So probably you relate with this. When you got on this video for the first seven seconds, you probably already decided like how you feel about me in this video, how you feel about this training, how you feel about this group, how you feel about the Young Living business. You've already kind of got that established within the first seven seconds. So how I present myself on this video is really important for when you first pop up, first pop pop up in front of someone that they already know kind of like who you are and what you're about. Why I tell you this is because it reiterates what we already know about business, about life. Confidence is everything. Thank you, mom. I love this jacket too. Um, <laughs> you want to see my sweatpants that I'm wearing on the bottom of this? Confidence is everything. And if you carry yourself 
with your chin held high, you carry yourself with confidence, you know that you are untouchable, that you are made of love, you are made of light, that nothing can, no success can add to the worthiness of who you are, no, no achievement is gonna add, when you have that kind of unshakable confidence, you are untouchable, and not only that, you are so magnetic. People love that because people want that more than anything else. They want that feeling of, I'm grounded, I'm good. And so this is some of the greatest work that we could do in this business, is even bigger than what to say and all the fancy things to say, is actually getting grounded. Thank you, and thank you, Erica, you're so sweet. Getting grounded into knowing like you are valuable. When you walk into a room, you've already got what it takes. You don't need anyone else's approval. And that kind of, I'm coming, my mom says it like this, and I say it all the time, coming from validation, coming from a place of validation where you know I'm good, like that not coming for validation. When you come for validation, it looks a lot like this. You come into the room, you're messing with your hair like I've been. You're, you're kind of, you know, reading other people first to see how you're going to respond. You are you know, engaging in a way that's hoping that you don't say something that's going to offend them or that they're going to like you. And that energy people pick up on. And that right there, that is the exact reason, exact reason why this skill is the one that I still have to work on and have to level up in. And it is my weakest. That is the exact reason why is because I work on this all the time. Work on being from coming from a place of validation, not needing validation. You think of the people that you admire and respect the most in this life, I guarantee you they are people who know their worth is completely separate from anything that you think of them. Anything that, you, if you admire them and you're like, man, they've just kind of got their life together, they are people who've got their life together. Because, and, and you are, you know, you think they have their life together, it's because they are grounded in who, in who they are. <coughs> All right, so, you can't say, so number two, so number one is confidence, getting grounded in who you are. Number two is you cannot say the wrong thing to the right person at the right time. I reiterate this over and over and over again because it's so true. You cannot say the wrong thing to the right person at the right time. Don't feel, don't feel super freaked out about that you're gonna accidentally say like essential rewards and you should have said loyalty rewards or that you're gonna accidentally like say something or you're gonna talk too much. You could talk too much to the right person and they will sort through. And I don't mean the right person like there's this magical person that it's the business is right for. I mean the right person like in their journey, they are supposed to be doing Young Living business or products at this time. And if that is the case, you can't do anything to stop them. <clears throat> I'm so sorry that I'm coughing. All of a sudden, I should have grabbed my water out there, but I didn't. And now I've already got the curtain shut, so we're not going back out there, but we'll figure it out. All right, so because you can't say the wrong thing to the right person at the right time, all you have to focus on now is just talking. It's talking to people and opening up your mouth. Number three, separation from yourself and what you sell emotionally. So we've got confidence is number one, unshakable confidence. Number two is you can't say the wrong thing to the right person at the right time. And number three is separation from what you sell and yourself. When you're talking to people about making a purchase, if you have any bit of energy in you that's like, I'm not enough if they don't buy, or I need them to buy so that I can be on a leaderboard of some sort, or um, I, I really want to get this sale or there's this like just attachment to the outcome. If you can't separate yourself from what you sell, there will always be awkwardness around that ask. That ask of, do you want to buy the starter kit? It's going to feel awkward if you're thinking, do you want to sell this, buy the starter kit? And if you say no, it rejects me. So what we have to do here is we have to take off of our, our big vision. I want Young Living Ro Royal Crown Diamond hat. We have to take that off and we have to put on our waitress hat. <coughs> we have to put on our waitress hat and our waitress hat says, do you want ketchup with your burger? Do you want Sprite or do you want lemonade or do you want water? And what uh, can I offer you an appetizer? It's, it's yes, I hope they have the greatest experience and yes, I'm willing to do everything in my power to help them have that great experience. But whatever they say means nothing about me. And if you can take off your big vision, Young Living Royal Crown Diamond hat and put on that waitress hat, 
Your business gets a lot easier when you actually get to sit down in front of prospects to talk to them. And so here's what I want you to do this week. This is going to be part of your homework is to practice this. Practice just the energy when you're talking to people and you're offering them something and you say, do you want to go ahead and get, do you want me to help you get a starter kit right now? It's not like nervous. It's not uncomfortable. It's not weird because you're literally just asking them as the waitress, do you want a starter kit or do you not want to do it? And trust them. There's an element of this that's actually trusting that they are the type of people that can say no if they want. Now, if you are the person, you if you are a type of person who does not believe that you can say no to things, you might be superimposing that on other people. If someone says to you, can you please, please um, come to my class, come to my party. Let's say they're in another network marketing company. Can you please come to my party? It's on this day, please. And you don't even respond to them because you don't feel comfortable saying no, but it doesn't work for you. You're not a person who can confidently say, no, I'm not able to do that. Or no, I'm prioritizing my time somewhere else then you might accidentally just assume that on somebody else and then you're assuming that they can't say no. That's your problem to own. I know this because I've been there before. I've been there where I'm so uncomfortable saying no. I don't feel like it's justified. I feel this weird responsibility towards their ask. And I actually used to get kind of, um, what's the word? <coughs> Excuse me. I almost used to get kind of like frustrated that they would cross that unspoken boundary that I had. And I'll never forget, I had an experience like this when I was in college and someone asked me if they could borrow my car. And I was so uncomfortable with them asking for, for to borrow my car. I was frustrated at them for asking that they didn't see my boundary that I had emotionally set up and just assumed. And so instead of just saying, I don't feel comfortable with that, but could I drive you somewhere? Or is there another way I can help? Or I don't feel comfortable with that. Have you tried with this person? I would just feel uncomfortable and get frustrated at them and then say yes. And that's not a very good way to live your life because then you don't have any personal power. I didn't have any personal power around that, around that way. And I, I, it comes up too, you know, when you have kids and they have toys that are their own and other people want to borrow them and what do we do as parents? We say, it's nice to share. <laughs> and the reality is that it's the, if it's their toy, sure, they could share or they could choose not to. And that's their decision if it's in their space. I think everybody parents differently around that. But that's something that I've had to be challenged on is, am I willing to just loan out my car to somebody who wants it? Maybe not. Maybe I do want to. And in my kindest self, best self, that is what I would choose. But it's just something to think about. And throwing in the little spice of, parenting thing there, like teaching kids their own personal power with their personal objects, their personal decisions, same concept here. Okay. So separation from what you yourself and what you sell and don't pre assume that they can't say no because you can't say no. And that might be something you could work on saying no, that might be a great homework piece too. All right. So there are two routes to go with this. That is kind of the overall, overall mindset of presenting your products and service and, pre and presenting the oils and what we do. But there's really two routes that you can go when we're talking about presenting the oils and what, what supplements and everything amazing that Young Living has to offer. The first one is, here's my education. Does it fit your needs? So you could write this down if you're taking notes. Here's my education. Does it fit your needs? So a great example of this is my mom. She has great education around hormones, menopause. She has a group. She does that. That's how she prospects. That's how she built her business. How she personally enrolls people is here's my education. It's on this topic. Does this fit your needs? And then her work when she's out and about prospecting, she's looking for people who have that specific need. And that's what we call getting niched down. That is one route to go. There's another route. And this is the route that I've taken so far is what are your needs? I'll tailor my education. So that's the other route. Yeah, I appreciate that, Nicole. Thanks for typing that, that out. What are your needs? I'll tailor my education. Neither of these are bad. Neither of these are bad. They're just different. So here is my education. Does it fit your needs? I already know what I'm passionate about. I already know what I'm going to talk about. I already know 
here it is. Here's what I have set. Or what are your needs? I'll tailor your education. And that is how I do my business. What are your needs? I'll tailor my education. For something like that, the Itovi scanner works great. That's what I have. I've been using it. It's going great. I basically scan everybody that will take a scan. And I have had a lot of success with that in the last few weeks. It's been a lot of fun. So here's how that goes. Usually a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So, so we'll go, we'll actually go, we'll go, here's my education, does it fit your needs first? So we'll go the niche route. Here's my education, does it fit your needs? A lot of times this is producing content that's going to be absorbed or um, absorbed or listened to or watched or engaged with or presented in a group setting. So here's my education, does it fit your needs? And this, I would say, even though it doesn't always have to be a class, most of the time, that is how people get started is they teach a class. Now with my mom, she's taken that class format and she does it in her Facebook group. So you can really do this any way you want. You can do it virtually, you can do it in person. Whatever you do though, just remember that consistency is really, really important and it, t it takes time. So like for my mom, and I know I use her as an example, but she's a really great example on this. She's had this Facebook group that she's been growing and pouring into and adding people to and creating education in and really just blowing air on the fire in for years. And then it, it finally caught traction as far as in the Facebook algorithm and with her own personal brand and all of those things took time. It took years. So don't expect yourself to just create a group and accidentally enroll 20 people a month. It's not going to probably be like that. It, it is going to be strategic and intentional. So if you are someone who you're like, I actually have a very clear vision and I want to serve these specific people with this niche need, what I would suggest is that Instagram is your outreach. Instagram is where you can holler with a megaphone. Come find me here. Come find me here. This is what I'm about. Relatable content for these people. And Facebook is where you gather the people. This is where you create the community. This is where you have a Facebook group. That's what I've seen work most of the time. When you get people added into a group, that's a trigger for a conversation, either through private messages or through an email or a series or through a text message. The more personal, the better. That is the flow I suggest if you have a specific niche um, and you want to go that route. Here's my education. Does it fit your needs? Then when you're out and about, you're doing the same thing you're doing on Instagram, shouting with a megaphone. You're out and about, you're shouting with a megaphone. Metaphorically speaking, you're at a networking event, you stand up, you say, I help blank group of people with this problem. That's what I do for a living. You have people come up to you and ask about it, you get them in the group. Like it's the same flow, you just use different ways of shouting with megaphone. Is this making sense? I hope so. Um, and and let, we'll talk about a class format here in a second, okay? So let's hop over to the other side, which is what are your needs? I'll tailor my education to them. That is typically gonna be a one-on-one -on -one format. So in this group, this is OQ Brand Partners group. This is um, a group specifically for the business. We have tools that we use in this business that are all the same. And so in the pinned post of this group, there's a link that says, brand partner blueprint. This is our team system that we released in April that has been absolutely phenomenal and awesome. So in that blueprint, and if you're a brand new brand partner, you got this mailed to you automatically as a gift from me. If you are a, uh, I don't know, what are we gonna call it? A grandfathered in um, brand partner, you either got it at OQ Charge or you had the opportunity to order it. You still have the opportunity to order it as a physical copy, but it also exists online as a digital copy. That digital copy is completely available in that pin post. So if you go to that link and you click the pin post and, it, and then you click um, Brand Partner Blueprint, you'll see two options when you get in there. One is Italian and one is English. Most likely if you're watching this, you're gonna, wa you're gonna be wanting the English version, so you'll click English. You'll see five folders in there. One says business basics guide, one says prospects, one says customers, one says brand partners, and one says other resources. The one, two, three, the prospects, customers, and brand partners files represent all of the resources that we have within those categories. So when we're talking about this, we're talking about enrolling prospects or presenting, pro presenting information to prospects, 
the information that you're going to find, the tools and resources that you'll need will be within that prospects folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click prospects. And what we'll find here is that the first thing you see is prospects list and prospects tab, because those are the two things you would print. But right under that is a little button, a little link that says class scripts. And that is what we're going to click, click in order to learn how would you teach a class. So here it is, I just clicked on it. I'm gonna read through it and walk you through how to teach a class. So this is a sample agenda for a class, party, or workshop. And remember, you are the CEO of your business. You can take this whatever way you want. You can teach classes however you want. And you don't even have to call it a class if you don't want. This is your business, you're the CEO. Your success rises and falls on your production. So here's a sample agenda that, we, that I created as a guideline for how to teach a class or a workshop or, or a party. So the first thing you would do is welcome everyone to the class. And that could simply look like this. Welcome, thank you for coming. The second thing you could do is an icebreaker slash a warm up game. So to get to know each other, or maybe post on Facebook. I've heard people say, take a picture of you with a friend next to you and tag them on Facebook, tag me and I'll, you'll be entered to win the Thieves Cleaner. Um, something to just get warm, people warmed up. And then the third thing is to share your story. Now in that little bullet point, there's a document that is linked that says how to tell your story. This walks you through step by step how to tell your story in a dynamic way that is just absolutely amazing, works every time, if you follow it. <laughs> when I say it works every time, it's impactful every time, it's meaningful every time, it's consistent every time, and better yet, it's duplicatable so your brand partners can actually learn how to tell their story in a way that's impactful and meaningful and consistent every time and compliant. All right, number four, educate on suggested products. So if your class is, for example, about oils and animals, then you would be talking about, here's the products that I absolutely love for helping my animals with their wellness. Or if your if your product if that you're talking about, the oil, if the class is pregnancy and oils, you could talk about, here are the oils that I love in pregnancy. Um, and take it from me, I was joking earlier because I made, I spent a few hours today working on these graphics for pregnancy and I spelled every single time I wrote pregnancy because I had just copy paste, copy paste, pregnancy. I forgot the preg, oh, pregnancy. I didn't do the N after the G. So I've been cracking up laughing. I deleted them everywhere I posted them. It already had like 20 shares on Facebook by the time I figured it out. Some sweet soul on Instagram is the one who told me about that I spelled it wrong. So I've been cracking up, but I'll have those graphics done soon. So if you want to teach that class, you'll have them. And I'll link that here in the blueprint as well. So when you go to like the, even in this document, it talks about um, class scripts topics. I'll, I'll have that link down there so you can just use that if you want. But anyway, so, um, so educate on suggested products. Um, there are some tools that I would suggest that you have if you don't have them already. Um, a pocket reference is a fantastic tool. And then if you're able to invest in the desk reference, I think it's just such an amazing reference. It's so big and it's easy to access like the information. You've got oils, blends, supplements, nutrition information, tons of education in there. I just really love mine and I use it all the time. So I recommend having that. Do some research. Get some statistics down for your class. Get ready for it in an exciting way. And then, um, guys, my leg is falling asleep so much that I, I have to move it. So I'm so sorry. I just literally have to move it or else I'm probably going to start crying. <laughs> if you saw my setup, you would be laughing too. Um, this is hilarious. Six more minutes, Bethany, you can do it. All right. So next, after you educate on the, uh, products that you want, the next thing I suggest in this document is to share oil success stories. So there's nothing more powerful, in my opinion, than right after you talk about the power of Ningxia Red and what it does and how many vitamins and nutrition, nutrients, um, it has in it and, you know, how many oranges it's equivalent to and all that good information right after that, if you go into, and this is a story from my friend so-and-so who had this situation and this was their result. This is my friend 
so-and-so who had this problem in their pregnancy. They took this and their next pregnancy was totally fine. Or this is my problem or my friend who had this. This is a story from so-and-so who lives in whatever. And just tell those stories because at the end of the day, facts tell, stories sell. And yes, do we need some facts to validate the stories? Absolutely. I think that's a great thing. But don't forget Nobody cares about delimining until they know what delimining can do in the body. Nobody cares about that part of orange oil till they read the study that or hear from the person who used orange oil in the, in the reason that the study was created. And that there could, okay, so if you go on PubMed and you look up the benefits of this orange essential oil, you see cancer, 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 cancer after cancer. And it's like, when you hear that story, it's way more impactful than when it's just like delimining is great for XYZ problem. So it's the personal stories that are the most meaningful. And then after you get done with your oils story, the successes, you can close your class with a call to action. Now, I have to shout out Laura Jones because we were doing a class a few, well, I don't know, probably a month ago now at Caitlin, uh, Caitlin Brown's house. And I got done teaching the class and I had this moment of a fruit fly. I had this moment where I froze up. Like it wasn't like super awkward or anything like that, but I was just like done teaching the class. And I kind of did the whole, so like, so like if anyone has any questions, you know, you can just let me know. It's like, it was just kind of weak sauce. And Laura, without missing a beat, she's like, okay, so everybody grab your phone. Caitlin, text them the link, text them your referral link. She's like, so, or she actually said, how would you view this from your desktop or your phone? How would you usually log in to uh, Young Living? And they said phone. They, she said, okay, pull out your phone. Caitlin, go ahead and send the link. Everybody click on that link. And she literally walked them through what to do. She said, click the three little lines at the top. I mean, it was like step by step. And it was coming to the conversation, coming to the class with an assumption that everyone was going to buy it. And I loved just her confidence in that. And I loved her stability in that. And it was like this moment for me. I was like, I am going to work on that. And I texted her afterwards. And I said, thank you for doing that because it taught me. And so sure enough, she did that. And it was awesome. So after you're done closing the class, what I recommend is going eye to eye with every single person, if you can, and ask them what they thought about the class. So what do you think about it? From there, you give them the chance to uncover their needs because they're just going to talk about how it was applicable for them. And all you have to do at that point is just keep listening and nodding your head and saying, really? Wow. Wow. Hmm. Awesome. Just listen and they will, you will watch them talk themselves into the purchase. And if you just keep your mouth shut, that's the most important thing. You have to keep your mouth shut. Then you're going to be, you're going to be good to go. Um, okay. <coughs> Next is, that's how to teach a class, um, a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So we're going to go back to the blueprints. So we're back in prospects. And so I walked you through in the beginning of this video how to get, get here. So if you're just joining in, go back and rewatch it so you can, you can find it. We don't have time, um, right now. But actually, um, if you click the button prospects tab, this is what is printed out in your binder. And in that, uh, prospects tab document, there's a little link that says one-on-one -on -one meeting. We're going to click that one-on-one -on -one meeting and I'm going to walk you through it really quick, even though we're getting really close to the time, uh, the ending time here, how to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. We'll go really quick. Number one, gather information. You're going to start the meeting by listening to their needs. You're going to listen so that you can understand and acknowledge. And before you jump straight into problem solving mode, they're telling you about their sleep. They're telling like, Oh man, I'm sleeping so terribly. I'm having all these issues. Instead of saying, well, what you need is tranquil. Well, what you need is peace and calming. Pause yourself. This is really important. Pause yourself and listen and acknowledge first the emotion that they may be going through. So if they're saying, man, sleep's just been rough. Like my daughter's been up every night and I'm just really exhausted. Before you say what she needs, just take a second and say, man, acknowledge them. That must be really, really rough getting up every single night. Are you doing okay during the day? Are you feeling exhausted during the day? And just reiterate how they must be feeling. And when they feel heard, when you can really feel them, see that they are heard, that they are really connected with. Say, I think I might have something that can help. I think I might have something. Would it be okay if I share with you what I think would help? 
and saying, would it be okay with you if I share what I think might help gives the opportunity for them to ask for it and say, yes, please do. Yes, I'm willing. The likelihood of them saying yes next to the next question is much higher if they've said yes to the previous question. So giving them that chance to say yes at first to something like, would it be okay if I give you this information? Then you can ask them some questions. There are some great easy questions on this document. F-O-R-M stands for form. F stands for from. Where are you from? Where did you grow up? My dad asks it like this. So where were you born and brought up? Or where are you from? That's a question that I hear my dad ask all the time. The O stands for occupation. So what do you do for work? O for occupation. R is for recreation. What do you do for fun? And then M is for mission. What lights you up? What are you doing? What's going on? What projects are you excited about right now? And then number two is to direct the conversation with questions. Would it be okay if I share my oil story with you? What question, what do you know about essential oils so far? Okay, what specific problems are you having that you are hoping oils might be able to help with? Okay, what questions do you have about oils that maybe I could answer? How can I help you from here? Do you want me to go ahead and help you place your order right now? That is the directing the conversation. Remember this, the person asking the questions is the person directing the conversation. We get it all messed up sometimes. We think if I just want to, I just want to get it all out. I want to tell them everything. I want to tell them about the 24% discount. And I want to tell them there. the person asking the questions is the person who's directing the conversation. So become a master question asker and know how to du direct the conversation. When they, when, if you want to tell them about subscription, instead of just telling them about subscription or loyalty rewards, as it's called, you could say, now, have you ever heard of our loyalty rewards program? That gives them the opportunity to say no. Okay, let me tell you about it real quick. So you're asking that question and then you tell them and then you're immediately diving back into the next question. Number three, set the follow-up. If they don't enroll at the one-on-one -on -one meeting, set an appointment for a good time to follow up with them. Oftentimes, you could just mention your next class, you can mention your next opportunity, and tell them that you're planning to follow up with them on this time. Hey, I wanna connect with you on Friday, and we'll see how things are going and, and how you're feeling with everything. Then follow through with what you say. You're a professional, you're a CEO, you're the president of your business, you're the, you're the CEO of your business. Treat it like that. Put it on your calendar, treat it like that, and actually follow up. All right, friends, that's what I have for tonight. Um, if you have, okay, so here's homework and you're going to fill out the form that's linked in the caption of this video, um, when you're done with it to continue on with your certification. So here's the homework. Um, uh, let me get back to my other page. Um, present your products to at least one person this week. That's your homework. And I can't wait to hear how it goes. Um, if you have any questions, reach out. Otherwise, have a fantastic night. I love you. I love this company. I love this team. And I'm looking forward to uh, just doing, doing it, doing the dang thing with you as we already are. Okay. Have a great night. Bye, guys.